Thank you everyone for joining us for uh, this presentation. My name is uh, Pierpaolo Matana. I'm the head of sales for beverage and filling for GEA North America based here in uh, Hudson, uh, Wisconsin. And um, we are gonna talk today about uh, maximizing shelf life and stability for up and coming beverage products with uh, our downstream processing. So we, there are new product categories every day uh, arriving in the market and the breweries are always trying to expand their product portfolio. So we are going to talk about, for example, hard seltzers or uh, ready to drink cocktails or uh, alcohol free beer. And uh, compared to beer, these products, they have uh, sometimes sugar or less alcohol or other ingredients that make uh, basically a bit more challenging to make them uh, basically stable during product distribution. And we are going to talk about what we can do to help. So before, I, before we start with the presentation, I want to thank the Crab Brewers Conference and the Brew Expo America for giving us the chance to present. And um, without any further delay, let's start. So I'm joined today uh, for the presentation by Eric. Eric E. Wickler is our regional sales manager covering the West Territories and dedicated to brewery and filling technologies for GAN of America. Tyler, he, Tyler Marriott is uh, his counterpart, but covering the uh, East uh, Coast Territories here in the US. And uh, what you have here is our email addresses. We are going to represent them at the end of the presentation. Do not hesitate to contact us in case you might require additional information or uh, any kind of inquiry. So, so um, the agenda, we are going to start with a, a brief introduction about uh, GEA and uh, a little bit about uh, product trends and why there is a need for longer shelf life. And then we're going to go into the details about flash pasteurization. So why flash pasteurization before filling the advantages and disadvantages and uh, we're going to talk about the GEA Visitron all-in-one, and uh, which is a, a, a GEA solution for uh, filling and uh, multiple kind of containers. And we are going to also discuss, in particular, uh, the ultra-clean filling capabilities for this uh, filling platform. So a uh, brief introduction um, about GEA. GEA is one of the largest technology suppliers for food processing and a wide range of other industries focused on technologies, components, and a sustainable solution for sophisticated production processes in diverse markets. So today we represent the liquid and powder division for GEA, where we are specialists in engineering and process equipment and integrated solution. We cover different industries, brewery and beverage. This is the, we are part of the group here, and but also dairy, food, chemical, and other uh, market technologies wise beverage and filling technologies liquid technologies powder technologies and emission control and chemicals services we are obviously very well established here in north america we have installation and commissioning support after sales service and um, consulting and uh, several other kind of support for uh, customers that are growing in in this industry and with several different competencies so product and process development process design, project management, automation, and execution. Just a little bit of uh, data about the group. So um, revenue uh, uh, was a four point, is 4.7 billions worldwide. And uh, just to give you an idea, is uh, full-time uh, employees worldwide is 18,100. So our mission, we strive to be the world's most respected technology group, offering cutting edge technology solution for sustainable process that improve people's everyday lives. So as we said before, we are present in um, different markets. So we are, we are active in uh, dairy, food, uh, infant formula, but we are really proud to say that an estimate of 50% of all the beer produced uh, in the market is with the aid of a system and solutions provided by, by GEA. 
in in north america uh, we have uh, we have approximately 1.7 billion uh, euros of revenues and uh, we have approximately 5500 employees this is our main location this is dedicated to the liquid and uh, powder technology we have an office in Hudson, Wisconsin, where we have uh, approximately 200 plus employees. And uh, this is where the beverage and filling headquarters is here for North America with project management, automation, and after service and uh, sales. And we also have another office in a location in Columbia, Maryland, where uh, we have approximately another 170 employees. So now let's uh, focus on uh, product trends. We talked about these uh, new categories that are growing. So art seltzers, it is uh, definitely taking market share across the board from beer, wine, and spirits. But most of the share is, is coming from the beer category. So it's definitely growing. It was growing more years before, but it's definitely continued to grow. And uh, so forecast by 2023 is that we are going to probably reach 281 million cases in the US for sale. So this is certainly another category that several brewers out there are, are exploring or they are already producing and they're ready to drink cocktails. This, this is another one definitely growing and they are basically shaping, shaking up the marketplace with the canned cocktails, wine spritzers and uh, hard seltzers. So, in 2020, there were approximately 25 million cases of uh, spirits-based RTG sold in the US. The volumes are growing 200% a year, so definitely an, an, an important category. And, uh, and that's also driven by the fact that the, the, uh, what happened with the craft brewery industry is happening now with the craft distillery industry. So in 2005, there were approximately 60 distilleries in the US. Today, the estimate is probably more than 2,000. It, 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 it sounds like another great success story. So, and uh, in other categories that breweries are are looking at very carefully is the alcohol-free beer. And uh, we have, uh, as a GEA, we have uh, several projects in progress for uh, basically providing technology for to produce alcohol-free beer. And um, we, we are also very active on the other two categories I, I just mentioned, art seltzers and uh, ready to drink cocktails. Um, yeah, alcohol free is, is growing and um, target are usually health conscious consumers. So because of low calories, no high call, it's a great non-alcoholic beverage alternative, great for a pregnant woman or nursing mothers, or simply for people that want to abstain. So. And there are new technologies out there and, uh, and they create growth opportunities for, for a better alcohol-free beer. So, and uh, it, it, the grow is out, outperforming standard beer and there is, a, there is a growth per year estimated at 7.5%. So there is a definitely huge opportunity for, for the North American market. And uh, for all these categories, there are marketing trends. So USDA organic, gluten-free, or a real fruit, for example, to add flavors or adding uh, functional ingredients like antioxidants. Obviously, you're always talking about low calories, low calories sugar free, or in case of hard cells, high concentration of alcohol. So, all these aspects create new challenges for the uh, brewery out there and, and trying to basically establish the right uh, way to produce this product, keeping in mind. Uh, uh, shelf stability. So, because for example, alcohol sometimes is alcohol is not there anymore, or the level of carbonation is lower than before, or there is some sugar added ingredients that create challenging, obviously, for the shelf stability of the product. So, and we are going to go ahead and, and talk uh, on the details about what technology we can use to basically mitigate these risks. No. Thank you, and uh, I'm gonna let Eric go ahead. We're gonna deep dive a little bit more into the technology now, and um, yeah, I'll probably see you at the end of this presentation. So, Eric, you can take it on. Thanks, Pierpaolo. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you uh, for joining us today. 
Uh, my name is Eric Wickler. I'm the Western Sales uh, Regional Sales Manager for GAIA for Brewing and Filling Applications. I've been with the company now for almost three years. Uh, prior to coming over to GAIA, I uh, spent about a decade in the brewing industry, uh, studied brewing fermenting chemistry, and have worked at a, a variety of breweries across the country of different sizes. Uh, today, we're going to talk to you about uh, two specific technologies uh, that we offer for specifically for downstream processing. Uh, but for those of you that may not be as familiar with us uh, as a company, I'd like to kind of point out that we are a, a complete process supplier uh, for all solutions related to alcoholic beverage uh, production and processing. So you can kind of see the, the list here is extensive. Uh, starting all the way up front for our wort and base production, whether that is through a brew house uh, for making actual wort from malt or for sugar handling for creating a, a base, a sugar base, whether that's from granulized sugar or liquid sugar, aeration of those bases, which is obviously important for fermentation, uh, yeast handling, which has become, I would say, uh, more uh, more relevant today than it has in, in years past, specifically in regards to some of these new products like the hard seltzers uh, that are using uh, dry yeast and nutrients. Uh, so getting those uh, ingredients slurried at the, at, for the appropriate amount of time, so on and so forth. Uh, then onto fermentation and fermentation optimization, utilizing our, what we call a jet mixer, and that's for uh, faster fermentations, better attenuations, higher alcohol. Uh, which can also be used in beer uh, as well as in, in seltzer fermentations. Uh, centrifugation, which many of you I'm sure are familiar with. Uh, we are well, well regarded for our centrifuges. And as Pierre Paulo mentioned earlier, uh, membrane filtration, which we've done a, a significant amount of work on in the last couple of years. Uh, flavor blending, uh, so mixed blending solutions. Uh, we've, we've done webinars on that as well. If you're interested in, in these technologies, uh, we can we can certainly point you in the right direction there. Uh, followed by carbonation uh, for both beer and seltzer applications. And then, of course, there's the flash pasteurization and our flexible all-in-one packaging line, which are really the two technologies that we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into today. So we'll go into flash pasteurization. So before we talk about the flash pasteurizer itself, uh, we want to make sure that we define and understand what is pasteurization and how is it relevant uh, to us in the industry. Uh, so according to the dictionary, it's a, a partial sterilization of a substance, especially when we're talking about a liquid, at a certain temperature for a certain amount of time that is uh, intended to destroy objectionable organisms without major chemical alteration of the substance. So in other words, we're going to heat up a liquid for a certain amount of, uh, for a certain temperature for a certain amount of time with the intention of killing the bugs, but not impacting the, the flavor or sensory profile of that beverage. Uh, a little bit of history, 1862, uh, that's when the first tests by Louis Pasteur were done on wine and beer. Moving on into the 1920s is when the first uh, basically flash pasteurizers or high temperature short uh, short time uh, were produced in England. And today flash pasteurization is the most common means for protecting various beverages from, from different types of spoilage bacteria. Uh, when we talk about measuring uh, pasteurization, we talk about uh, units of PU, a pasteurization unit. And you can see here the formula for beer, which is a, a time in minutes multiplied by a constant there with the temperature up above. Uh, historically, brewers uh, look for a 10 to 15 PU to protect their, their beers. So in it, for an example, uh, pasteurizing at 70 degrees C for 30 seconds would result in a PU of around 14. Um, a couple things to note here is that the PU formula for beer is different than it would be for juice or milk. Uh, which is relevant when we talk about creating new beverages uh, in your potentially brewery. Let's say you're making a seltzer uh, and you're adding purees or, or something else along those lines, that PU constant would be different. And that's something that we can, we can help you with. Uh, another kind of side note on PUs is typically what we'll see on the seltzers or RTDs. Uh, um, PUs are, are, we're typically looking for a, a significantly higher value than you would in beer. 
So a little bit about our experience with uh, flash pasteurization. Uh, so we've been doing it for many years, over 50 years, you can see with over 300 references uh, in the beer world and over 200 references uh, in the milk and food world. Uh, we are known as globally as basically experts in this and, and many of the large larger organizations, brewers uh, will, will bring in people from GEA uh, for pasteurizers to ensure that they're operating correctly. And that's really for assured quality. Okay, so now we know what pasteurization is. Uh, we know that we have some experience there. Uh, so why why should we be pasteurizing? Uh, so as I mentioned before, it's it's crucial uh, for a stable product uh, without impacting the original taste, right? So we want we have that thermal inactivation of microbiological properties in the product uh, without harming the product. Uh, this way, we're we will have sustained quality and the and uh, the sustained quality of the product is ensured so as with all of our other equipment uh, we use a strict hygienic design criteria when building these and we have very uh, very precise temperature control and pu control we like to say we can guarantee you a plus or minus one pu so we're going to pasteurize for that increased shelf stability and why is that important why is that important? Uh, as you know, uh, if you walk into any beverage store or liquor store, uh, as these new products have come out, there is an ever increasing amount of SKUs on the shelf, right? So if you have more SKUs coming out, that means it's likely going to take a little bit longer for your product uh, to sell because the consumer has so many options. So we want to be able to extend the shelf life so that way we mitigate the chances of having to destroy product out in the market. Uh, another big reason which I like to point out is in the difference between these new products and beer uh, is that beer was typically wort and yeast, right? So there was very little chance of, of any contamination um, downstream or within the process itself, which is very different than a lot of these new product seltzers, for example, or RTDs, where you may have many additions, manual additions of different ingredients. You can see some examples here of whether maybe you're, you're dosing by hand into a bucket uh, or you have an IBC tote or a drum. Um, so essentially there's many more potential contamination points. So we believe that flash pasteurization is the most ideal way to, to uh, handle this. So our unit, our, our larger flash pasteurizer is known as the EcoFlash system. You can see a, a picture here on the left. Um, it's designed really for the efficient heat treatment and stabilization of the product, focusing primarily on the microbiological safety, but also the quality and flavor stability. Uh, we, we can design these pasteurizers to accommodate flow requirements, but as little as 20 hectoliters up to very large pasteurizers. Uh, you can see here 900 hectoliters an hour. Um, fully automated uh, modular skid mounted system, and they operate at a very high pressure, six up to 16 bar, ensuring that CO2 stays in solution. Uh, you can see here kind of a layout of basic design of a flash pasteurizer with a buffer tank. Uh, the key features we like to, to point out are a three-stage plate heat exchanger with energy recovery rates up to 96%, which is really uh, very excellent. Uh, we utilize positive pressure gradients uh, to protect in case of plate failure, ensuring that we will never have uh, pasteurized, unpasteurized product going onto the pasteurized product side. We utilize mixed proof separation of the, the pasteurized and unpasteurized product as well as water and obviously CIP lines and all of our components used are of sanitary design. On the other side of, of the this, of, um, side of the flash pasteurizers of the different types of systems we offer, we also offer what's called our micro flash pasteurizer. And this was designed with the craft brewer in mind. So it's a kind of, I'll say a slim down version, a straightforward design intended for batch operation instead of uh, we'll say a continuous operation with like an eco flash that maybe you're flashing into a buffer tank that's directly feeding into a packaging line. This would be used more for a tank to tank operation, let's say post maturation or post ingredient additions that you would flash into a bright tank that then you would later hook up to your filler. Uh, 
it does come with an automate, automation package. You can see there, there's an HMI touchscreen there. But really, we designed this for smaller production capacities, you know, which are typically in line with craft brewers, so anywhere between 10 to 80 hectoliters an hour. It's still designed with three heating sections, a heating, a regeneration, and a cooling section. And of course, all GEA standard um, components and service and support. So, so sort of in summary, it's more of an economic way to go without sacrificing our performance or quality. Uh, the product quality factors that we look at uh, in either design for the large or the smaller versions is all generally always about pressure, right? So product integrity. So our technology utilizes a positive pressure drop to negate any possibility of cross contamination, and that's even if you had a, a plate in the heat, uh, a plate failure or gasket failure or something in in the uh, in the unit. Uh, we, we utilize a booster pump upstream at the heat exchanger uh, to keep pressure above saturation pressure of the dissolved CO2, and this pre this prevents degassing. So your 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 product will always be at the right carb level uh, when it comes out of the pasteurizer. So then we then there's always the question: Well, should I flash or should I tunnel? Uh, our theory guess theory is that flash pasteurization is a, is a much better way to go. Uh, there's, of course, the allure of the tunnel pasteurizer, that it's the uh, it's essentially the, the end-all, be-all of pasteurization. It's because it's done after filling. Uh, however, there's a, a lot of downsides, in our opinion, uh, to tunnel pastur uh, pasteurization, specifically when, you're, when you talk to craft brewers. Uh, one, one issue, one big issue generally is that they're huge, right? So they take up a, an enormous amount of space, which is generally an issue uh, for the craft brewer. Uh, they're a much higher capital investment than a flash pasteurizer. They're relatively energy inefficient. Uh, they're expensive to operate. Um, and they're not, they're really not like any other equipment in the planet. And as a, as a side note there, you'll see the, the kind of the comment on uh, high CO2 products. Right, so what we've seen in in the industry is these these seltzers or RTDs typically have a higher CO2 uh, level than would would be in beer, which be, can become a real issue in a pasteurizer. We like to say they turn into grenades, um, so that also needs to be uh, uh, taken and uh, kept in mind. So really, it's it's about maintaining a hygienic process, uh, utilizing a flash and then leading on into packaging, having the cleanest packaging uh, filler and line that you can. And that's where uh, Tyler's gonna take over and he's gonna, he's gonna tell you a little bit about our all-in-one as well as its capabilities. Thank you very much, Eric and Pierre Paulo. Uh, appreciate your time and great job with the intro and flash pasteurization notes. Uh, and I'm happy to transition into uh, GIA VPOL filling and packaging today. I'll start out by introducing myself. I'm Tyler Marriott, the East Coast Regional Sales Manager for Brewing and Filling Technologies at Gaia. I joined the team last year with a background in the equipment manufacturing space, focusing specifically on uh, various liquid processing applications, ranging from brewing to uh, different botanical extraction systems. So moving into VPOL filling and packaging, Here we go. Vpol, a company that has been around for a little over 30 years, established and headquartered in Slovenia, uh, joined the GIA Group in 2018, uh, nearly 200 employees at this point. It is a company that specializes and focuses on uh, filling various uh, beverages from carbonated to still, alcoholic to non-alc, hot to cold fills in a variety of packaging options as well, from uh, PET to glass bottles to cans with some core values set to advanced customer support, high quality equipment, turnkey projects, uh, and low maintenance costs uh, that we'll dive into a little bit further down the road as there's typically uh, low labor costs involved with the number of operators required for these systems. Now, speaking of some of the general characteristics from a mechanical, operational, and hygienic standpoint, uh, external laying filling valves and pneumatically controlled filling valves throughout uh, fast reactions and exact filling levels uh, are critical from a mechanical standpoint. Now, operationally, these systems are engineered and designed with the operator in mind for easy and flexible handling, uh, as well as maintenance, fast and tool-free format change, which is critical 
uh, when we compare to conventional systems. Um, and from a hygienic standpoint, we've got full stainless steel execution throughout. And like any other washdown environment in your facility, we've got slope surfaces for better and more controlled microbiological standards, uh, as well as automatic CIP cleaning, bottle burst cleaning systems, et cetera. Now, from an electronical uh, characteristic standpoint, notice the picture on the right. This is a, a pretty standard looking PLC system. So it's a program logic control with a touchscreen user interface, app centric, where there's pictures, um, you know, very easy to navigate and operate, stainless steel housings, product storage management, um, filtered to a SCADA system for supervisory control and uh, data acquisition, as well as advanced troubleshooting options uh, on the control screen. Now, here's uh, some really good pictures here from the, the low capacity to high capacity systems. On the left, we have the craft brewer in mind for lower uh, throughput systems. Maybe you have a smaller footprint. Maybe you don't need as many cans per minute or bottles per minute. Uh, we have systems that are designed and engineered for your needs uh, to a higher capacity, more automated and higher throughput system, as you see pictured here on the right uh, and at the bottom with the same sophisticated technical execution. Now, moving to the all-in-one filling system, uh, this is the Visitron filler uh, that we have featured here today for All-in-One with a speed range of 80 cans uh, up to 500 cans per minute, depending on the size of your containers as well as the volume of these containers. And notice the, the second bullet from 150 mil up to 750 milliliters. Now that essentially means you can fill a slim can or a champagne bottle all within the same system. Uh, so volumetric filling system or short filling tubes, uh, as I mentioned, it's a universal design for a wide range of beverages from still to carbonated alcoholic to non-alcoholic, hot to cold. So we've got carbonated soft drinks to beer, to champagne, to wine, to juices, all within the same filler. Uh, there is a double pre-evacuation system in here for low oxygen pickup. That is critical for preservation. Uh, we have a, a really unique gas exchange system that we'll dive into later, uh, as well as a flexible and space-saving solution for having um, multiple applications within a single system. Now, this is a, a vertical view of that system we just looked at. Starting at the bottom right of this diagram is the in-feed screw where your container will come in, uh, feeding to the green turret, which is your rinser, uh, into the uh, purple turret, which is your filler, and the transfer screw will then take you to the capper for crown corks, ALU or, uh, and or PCO caps to the seamer. And we'll dive into each of these uh, applications in the next slides, uh, starting with the rinser. Now, uh, notice the picture on the right. This system has a universal rinse gripping uh, that is custom designed for this specific customer and each customer. Um, this displays PET, uh, what appears to be uh, either 16 or 19 ounce cans as well as bottles. Now this universal rinse gripping system is capable of picking up each of those um, at the same time. Now you would not run this system uh, with e these different uh, containers at the same time, but this is just to, to display and showcase that you have one universal gripper uh, that is capable to handle all of your packaging needs um, and with no changeover necessary, which is nice. Uh, it is automatic height adjusted uh, through the PLC system, and this is designed with one or two uh, separate channels for different rinsing media. Most of our customers are starting with a disinfecting agent and then following up with either a sterile air or sterile water. Uh, moving to the filler portion of this system, uh, this turret has volumetric filling, uh, pneumatically controlled external laying filling valves, as we discussed, and then we've got a gas exchange system, which is unique to Gaia Vpol uh, for the low uh, oxygen pickup with a single or double air evacuation for all containers. For example, you wouldn't want to run full vacuum on a can as it would crumble, uh, so we've got a unique system to exchange the gas uh, to clean and fill um, hygienically. Now, this is the next slide for the valve sealing system. Notice the pictures on the left. The U-shape uh, spring is all you need to remove in order to change over from a can to a glass bottle or vice versa. So there are no tools needed, and a single operator is very capable of, of doing this changeover format, um, and it's a very easy system. So if you ever have the opportunity to see one in person, uh, we'd be happy to show you, but it's a single. Uh, this U-shape spring is removed, pulling it out and switching from a can to glass or vice versa. Now to the capping and seaming uh, turret portion of this system. 
uh, you'll notice a trend in the following uh, slides where we have combination systems. Uh, this specific combination is a capper seamer combo on a single turret with a capacity of 200 bottles per minute. Now, if we need to increase uh, your throughput or capacity over 200, we would just dedicate a turret to each application. So that would be the theme moving forward is that we have combination turrets. And if we need to get to a specific capacity, we would just dedicate applications to each turret. So some of the benefits, uh, minimal product loss during seaming operation. Uh, from a seaming standpoint, there is undercover gassing. And from capping, we have the hot water injection, which is included. Now the lid supply system, which also is unique, we have a uh, lid magazine system here where you essentially just drop your lids in, uh, whether they are um, standard or slim, uh, the system is capable of handling both. Uh, it's an automatic lid feeding system. And then notice the picture in the bottom left is uh, it's a lid disinfection bath, which is an option to uh, essentially rinse your lids on the way to the seamer. Um, so it's a, just another step for keeping a hygienic uh, environment. Now, this diagram on the left is a turret showing the combination for slim and standard size cans uh, for, again, with the theme of a, a combination uh, has a capacity of 250 cans per minute while coupling both of these. And if you need a single um, can lid type uh, to increase over 250 cans per minute, we would need to dedicate those applications to an individual turret. Now, the second capping turret, uh, this picture shows the AOU capping heads and the PCO capping heads. Uh, possible capping combinations on a single turret with these. Uh, without any changeover, you have AOU, screw caps, PCO caps, crown corks, and T corks. And again, with the theme, we've got three different capping applications available for 130 cans per minute, um, two different applications for 260 cans per minute, and anything over 260, we would just dedicate uh, the application to an individual. Uh, turret. Uh, really like this slide. This is a powerful one. Uh, moving from cans uh, format change to a bottle uh, is a 30 to 60 minute uh, changeover format. Now, notice that uh, one operator and tool free, comparing this to conventional systems or having multiple systems within your facility, this is a huge time saver and it's very cost effective uh, as well as, as not having as much labor involved. So, 30 to 60 minutes to change over from cans to bottles. Most of our customers have these systems dialed in and they're hovering around that 30 to 35 minutes uh, for a quick and easy changeover. Now moving from a standard to a slim size can, you're looking at roughly 10 minutes to an hour and a half. Uh, and that is going to be dependent on the machine size and configuration, of course. Again, with the theme of one operator and tool free and comparing this to a conventional seamer, whether it's a normal or quick changeover, you typically have two skilled technicians, and that can range from two to four hours with a conventional seamer uh, compared to 10 minutes to an hour and a half with one operator and no tools. Uh, not only is it a cost saving from a labor standpoint, but the amount of downtime you are not facing uh, compared to the amount of filling time that you will now have available, um, there's a, certainly an ROI in that in itself. Uh, this is a, another really good slide showing a vertical footprint. Uh, when you On the left, you have a typical glass line uh, right next to a canning line, which you see in many large facilities. Uh, for those who have a uh, you know, variety of SKUs, you need different systems. Uh, on the right, we have our all-in-one um, filling line, which again is capable of PET cans or glass bottles of various size and speeds. Uh, it has 60% less foot space uh, or, or footprint floor space. So, you know, many of the craft brewers out there don't have a, you know infinite amount of space. So something to consider uh, for your packaging needs if you are tight on space. This is something that can certainly help um, provide you with more options and flexibility. Uh, and also considering those co-packers out there, this gives you a variety of options with less space. So with the theme of our, our presentation today and preservation of products, uh, and hygienic um, environments. We want to move to the ultra clean all-in-one system from Gaia uh, compared to a conventional filling system. And this is a diagram of a conventional can filler uh, starting at the top left in blue. Notice it is a gravity rinser with only a single medium um, to, to clean. And then you've got an open conveyor from the rinser to the filler feeding it down. Uh, this open conveyor is uh, open to the environment, not hygienic uh, possibility of infection. Uh, and then the filler seamer is not typically in the same housing. Again, not a hygienic environment. And this system has uh, no possibility for any sort of lid disinfection, um, which the, the Gaia systems do offer. 
Now, this is the Gaia Can uh, Filler Seamer. Uh, instead of gravity, it is a rotary rinser with two-stage rinsing. Uh, we've got the disinfectant first, followed by the sterile water inside and outside. Uh, the rinser filler seamer are in the same housing, and then it is a controlled, clean environment from the rinser to the seamer. Uh, and then notice the bottom right of this diagram is the lid disinfection uh, with the option and possibility of that bath system to disinfect the lids uh, from a secondary option. Now, the ultra clean all-in-one uh, will discuss uh, the housing unit here. This is a front view of it, fully enclosed housing with the HEPA filtration, uh, and the lid disinfection system is on the bottom left of this diagram. Uh, also, one thing to mention is the, the cables that uh, power this system. Uh, there are no open cable trays. They are run through the, um, the columns and the, the horizontal uh, trays, uh, and they're all enclosed. So nothing is open there, uh, fully enclosed environment for CIP. And looking at the backside of this system, you'll notice the HEPA filters at the top, air exhaust systems, uh, sterile air on the inside of the electro uh, distributor, as well as the sorting unit crown cork on the top. Now, comparing ultra clean to high grade ultra clean, uh, the high grade has a multi chamber housing with laminar flow uh, with over pressure regulation uh, compared to the ultra clean system. And uh, when comparing the container disinfection mechanisms, the high grade system offers two rinsing turrets, uh, dedicated rinsing turrets for single media uh, compared to um, the single rinsing turret offered in the uh, ultra clean. Uh, moving to the closure uh, disinfection sterilization system, comparing ultra to high grade, they both offer lid disinfection, uh, which again is unique to Gaia. Uh, nobody on the market, to our knowledge, does offer this, uh, as well as they, they both offer cap sterilization for the crown corks, ROPP, and PCO caps. And a good diagram in the left, uh, which essentially looks like a car wash with CIP media uh, that they both offer for the clean in place. Uh, some of the customer benefits in the, uh, having a single filler versus uh, dedicated uh, cans and glass bottles, uh, the obvious cost savings of not having two systems on standby, the amount of electricity uh, that is consumed, utilities, uh, you know, building utilities, sewers, lighting, ventilation, energy, media, 60% um, less floor space with one system versus two. Uh, the amount of uh, personnel that is required to, to operate two systems versus one, uh, and not to mention the, the restart cycle with higher energy consumption. So it, it seems like a no-brainer having one system versus two, but uh, wanted to, to weigh in some of the customer benefits uh, kind of near the end of this presentation. Uh, now, in summary, uh, historically, fillers are the highest risk process areas for contamination. We, we understand that. Uh, however, with GEA's flash pasteurization and ultra clean all-in-one technology, you will mitigate that risk uh, to execute great tasting beverages in a highly controlled environment. So uh, with that said, uh, we would like to thank you guys very much uh, for joining us today. If you guys do have any questions uh, or would like any additional information from our team, our contact information is listed here. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. As, uh, again, I am the East Coast Regional Sales Manager. You have Eric as the West Coast Regional Sales Manager, and Pierre Paulo is a uh, Sales Director over North America, and we're happy to help with any needs you guys might have. Thanks, everyone.